Hi, I'm Aaron Sym from WebRTC Ventures, here today with another WebRTC tip for you. Today I want to talk with you about recording. Uh, recording can be really important in a WebRTC application, depending on your use case. There's a few different reasons we typically see that you might want to build recording into your video application. One is if you want to record meetings, uh, have, a, have a recording of that. Uh, customer service is a common scenario too. If you want to record customer service calls for quality assurance or record keeping, whatever the case may be, uh, that may be another reason to build recording into your application. Or maybe the application you're building is something that you're using to produce a webinar or event. And so you're using WebRTC not necessarily for a live scenario, uh, but uh, to produce a recorded video like we're doing right here. Uh, or you just need a recording of that live event as you do it. Any of those scenarios are reasons you might build recording into your WebRTC video application. There's a number of considerations you need to keep in mind. And if you know that you need recording in your application, it's a good idea to think about these up front because this could drive your uh, architectural choices in building your application. So some considerations to keep in mind. What will be the cost of that? If you're using a commercial communication platform as a service, a CPaaS, they often charge additional for recording. So make sure that you're looking into what those fees will be for your specific scenario, especially if you're using recording on a large scale. That could be prohibitive. Or if you were building uh, your WebRTC application based on an open source architecture, still need to consider costs there as well because it's going to create extra burden on your media servers perhaps. So you might need to scale those larger and use larger server instances or more instances. Or, and or you need to consider where are you going to put all of these recordings and do you need to do any post-processing on them and what servers will that be done on? So there are still storage and CPU costs to keep in mind with an open source solution as well. You also need to think about uh, how you're going to use the recording. What is the layout of that? So you know, think about a meeting tool that you're in with multiple people on the screen at once. Sometimes in those meeting tools, you can change the layout to the person who's speaking or for you to maximize a particular speaker. All of those same sorts of things, you need to think about that in the recording as well. How are you going to show screen sharing, for example, if screen sharing is happening in the call? What if multiple people are sharing their screen? So those layout considerations that you think about in the design of your live video application, you also need to think about on the recording side because depending on the architecture you choose, you may or may not have as much flexibility around that layout. You also need to think about the quality of those recordings. This will certainly impact your storage costs. Do you need a full HD quality? size uh, recording or can you do with something smaller and for what period of time are you going to keep those recordings as well and you need to think about security as well because most likely whatever you're recording may have private content in it right if this is a corporate meeting you don't want that just shared publicly if you are recording a um, private patient or customer conversation or customer support situation you may want to be sure that that's not going to accidentally be shared with anybody publicly, right? So where are you going to put those recordings? What security are you going to put around them? And while we're on the topic of security, a popular topic right now is end-to-end -end encryption of your application so that you can have complete encryption of video and audio from uh, in between each participant. Now, true end-to-end -end encryption, either you have to not have a media server in the middle or you need to use insertable streams with it, which is a relatively new uh, concept in, in WebRTC, but would allow you to do true end-to-end -end encryption with a media server. However, if you're doing true end-to-end -end encryption, that probably means you can't have recording of that because recording is typically done on our media server. And so there's, there's not a good way, not an efficient way to record and end encrypted calls. So if that's important to you, you need to balance that against recording as well. And uh, there are two main concepts in how you're going to do a recording. Whether you do you want to do it as a composite recording or individual stream. So let's briefly look at both of those. Option one is a composite recording. So this means that the recording is going to be done on the media server, and it's going to give you a single video file as an output with all of the different streams of however many participants you had in that call uh, all together in one video file for you. 
This is nice and simple. Uh, it means there's less work for you to do. Uh, as an application developer, you're just going to let the user hit record, and at the end, you're going to get a recording of the call. Nice and simple. All you've got to worry about now is where you're going to store it, putting some security around that stored file, perhaps. But you don't really need to worry about the recording itself. So nice and simple. But the big drawback here, you don't have very much control over the layout of it. So it may be that regardless of what the layout of the speakers is in the live application, the media server always records it in a grid format, perhaps, as, as I've drawn on the screen here. And that's a particular problem, perhaps, if one of those streams is not a person speaking, but a screen share. And normally you want the screen share to be larger than the speakers around it so that it's easy to read what's on the screen, right? But you may or may not have that control in the composite file, or you need to at least consider how to uh, indicate to the media server this file should be shown predominantly. So you have to consider that a composite recording may or may not look like the same layout that you had in the tool itself, and is that okay? Um, you know, think too in your live video tool, the layout sometimes changes during the conversation, especially if you have your meeting application set to automatically show the current speaker larger than the other speakers. That may or may not translate to the recording as well. Final drawback of this is uh, that this is generally done on the media server, the same server that's also handling all the video streams and maybe handling multiple video calls in parallel to each other. So that's going to put extra processing burden on your media server, which means that, that a single instance of that media server can now scale to fewer conversations wide if it's also recording all of those. So that's something else to keep in mind for your application uh, as it scales. The alternative to consider is recording as individual streams. So in this scenario, our media server is going to just write to file as the call is progressing uh, individual streams for each speaker, maybe even individual video and audio streams. This is great because this gives you a lot of flexibility in what you do with the recording. You can change the layout however you want throughout the length of the call. Uh, you can do anything you want with those individual ones. You can take the stream that is your screen share and make sure that it's always big. Uh, you can uh, do some post-processing on those files. Uh, so you have a ton of flexibility with this, which is great. And so depending on what you're going to do with this recording, this might be the best option for you. But you need to keep in mind, it does create a lot of work. Uh, so at a minimum, you probably need to do some post-processing of those files on the media server before they can be shared. But then also, how, do you, how are you going to play back those files to a user? If you're going to play them back as kind of four different files, how do you make sure that they're time synced across them? Uh, what if one file is a different length than another one because one participant was not in the call the same amount of time as everybody else? They joined late, they left early. How are you going to handle situations like that? Uh, so this does require extra work, some extra considerations, but the flexibility of being able to work with those individual streams might be really important for your use case. Another benefit, though, that this does have is this, generally speaking, is going to be less work on the media server itself because it's not trying to combine the files uh, live or anything like that. It's just writing them to disk, and then you get to do whatever you want with after them. So uh, that's a benefit to your media server. Your media server can now probably handle more conversations in parallel because recording them doesn't take as much work. Uh, however, it probably also means you need to have some other servers in your architecture that will take those files do the processing that's necessary on them, uh, and then, then store them securely. So a little bit of extra complication in your architecture in return for a lot of additional power over that recording. Uh, but because of that processing work that's done, you're also uh, pretty much guaranteed to have some delay in the availability of the recording. In most use cases, we find that's not a problem to have some some small delay uh, before the recording is available. So that's pretty typical. Generally speaking, it's worth it, but it is something to be aware of. So those are the two primary um, user-facing concerns about recording. Do you want to handle it as a composite stream or as individual streams? That's a really important decision to make up front because it may 
determine the, the architecture that you choose for your open source media server or which CPaaS you go with based on what flexibility they give you in the API. So this is a really important consideration to think about up front. And so at Weber TC Ventures, when I'm talking with potential clients, I, it's frequently one of my first questions to them is, do you need recording in this application? And if you do, how much recording you gonna, are you going to do? Are you recording every call? Because that could be really intense and or expensive. Um, a lot of times if somebody says they want to record every call, I might try to talk to them more, maybe even try to talk them out of that um, and see if they really do need it or not. Uh, but then also, once we've decided how frequently they need to record, what is the purpose of that recording? What are they going to do with it afterwards? And that will help us determine if it should be composite or individual streams, what sort of architecture to use to build that. So this is a really important decision in your WebRTC application. And uh, so definitely think about this ahead of time. Uh, and uh, if you have questions, what's the best architecture for your scenario? Uh, or you want to build in recording into your existing application and something you haven't done before, we'd be happy to help with that as well. Contact us at webrtc.ventures. Follow us on Twitter at WebRTC Ventures for more WebRTC tips like this. I'm Aaron Syme, founder and CEO at WebRTC Ventures. Thanks for joining me today for this WebRTC tip, and let's make it live.